Look, a lot of shitty Christmas movies. There hasn't been a happy Christmas since his parents die. But only Chip Rossetti could write the line, Her father was killed immediately, but his mother lingered on as a vegetable for years. <laughs> you know, just, just that husk of a human being that really lets you know there is no soul and there's just a brain inside a machine. Anyways, let's get back to planning this fucking Christmas. It's so weird. <laughs> right? <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because Eli was rude to a wizard. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us tonight, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. I would like to buy a people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we will have a lot of advice on how that's done coming right up. That's what we call foreshadowing, folks. Okay, and but also joining us is returning guest masochist and host of Talk Nerdy, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. This was a rough one. Well, first of all, apologies for leaving you alone with Heath and Eli. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck happened, but I know I, like, it, it ended with Eli explaining why he used company funds to redirect skinbook.com to your personal website. So I'm guessing I owe you at least one apology for this. Yeah, yeah, just one. Sure, just one. <laughs> it's like, like I said, at minimum, minimum. I have more. I brought, I brought enough for the whole class. But moving on from that for a moment, tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Okay, so the movie is called The Borrowed Christmas. It's it's what I'd hoped would be just a subpar Jesus-y Christmas movie, but it turned out to be the literal worst thing you guys have made me watch so far. Oh. Where do you find this shit? Like who who is doing this deep research to find these god awful movies? Oh, a two words on this one, Chip Rosetti. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, because like, like, yeah, in terms of the message, it's certainly not the worst thing we've made you sit through. But in terms of its entertainment value, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chip brought out the big guns for this one. Yeah, no, I was getting a little ahead of my question here. Eli, tell us, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the moralizing and cutesiness of normal Christmas movies, but it lacks the unaware horror of bringing a prostitute to your sister's wedding, you still <laughs> love this movie. Oh, it was so weird. So, okay, so here's the thing about this movie. We spent 90 minutes watching a bunch of actors pretend to pretend to have a boring Christmas. <laughs> right? So, so if you strip away all the layers of meta, we watched a bunch of strangers have a boring Christmas. <laughs> have a boring, pathetic Christmas. Wow. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, oh, I've got one. This is the best worst video with a 0% rating on RedTube. Oh, nice. <laughs> it, it got the coveted zero, huh? <laughs> the only review on IMDb was titled, Did I Just Watch the Worst Movie Ever Made? And I'm like, I think you might have, and I'm a bit of an expert. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go with best worst repeated title corrections. <laughs> Like, very clearly, this movie is supposed to be The Rented Christmas, but, like, they couldn't get that website or anything. So they have all, they, like, constantly they have these characters shoehorning it. No, no, at, at the Borrowed Christmas is the title drop. Borrowed, borrowed Christmas. Borrowed. Snakes are on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go with best worst horror movie that doesn't realize it's a horror movie. Right, act four of this movie is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> okay, spoiler alert, but don't worry, nothing else happens in the movie. This movie is about a man who is rich, in heavy quotation marks, who decides he's <laughs> going to rent a family for Christmas. And at some point during that Christmas, he realizes that he's going to keep these human beings. <laughs> now, again, if at some point he had hacked his way through a door with an axe, I get where this movie is going. But that's the thing, Eli. It's like it was like teetering on this really weird precipice between horror, 
and porno the entire right. yes. time. It was so strange to watch. It had all the trappings of a bad porno, like really bad audio, like half the scenes were out of focus. None of the actors were actually actors. And every minute I was like, okay, is she going to take her pants off? Yeah. Well, right, right. Because like we should point out that most of the people that he hired kidnapped whatever <laughs> he, he asked them to call him daddy too so yeah this <laughs> definitely has some porno trappings yeah, and what's great is it's that thing and we've all been in this situation where you're with a religious person who doesn't know the fuck words but they say the fuck <laughs> words yep it's amazing so, and then you have like, to suppress the laugh yeah, yeah. like there's, you're sitting around thanksgiving and grandma's like well your your boss has been giving it to you hard and you're like come on grandma they <laughs> I know they had, we're all related to you. You fucked <laughs> once. Someone said, that's what this entire movie is based on those. Yeah. Robots. Wow. I think you're right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We have six, possibly seven max exceedingly long <laughs> scenes on the other side of this break. So we're going to take a, a minute to ramp up to this one, but we'll be back soon with all the insane interactions that are the borrowed Christmas. Dude, just stop. You're smearing it around. I am not. I am thinning it. Give it's it a second. Hey, hey, Noah, have you seen my... Oh, my God. What is that smell? Oh, hey, Kara. E Eli's proven my point about Hello Tushy. Is that what he calls it? Seriously, you need to put him in a hospital or something. No, no, no. Hello Tushy. They're, they're <sighs> our sponsor this week, and they make a modern <sighs> bidet attachment. What's a bidet attachment? It sounds fake, right? Thank you. Hello Tushy attaches to your existing toilet so there's no electricity or additional plumbing needed. And it cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water, all for just $79. Wow, that's a great price. Too great, right? Unbelievable. Right. So then Eli and I started arguing about whether bidet or toilet paper was better. And we, you can see what he did to the floor. That's so gross. I just need more paper towels. I'm going to I'm going to do it. It's fine. I, I, well, I wish this floor like Hello Tushy came with a 60 day risk free happy butt guarantee and a 12 month warranty. I can imagine. So how can listeners get one anyway? Well, they can get 10 percent off plus free shipping right now at Hello Tushy dot com slash awful. That's Hello Tushy dot com slash awful for 10 percent off and free shipping. HelloTushy.com slash awful. Sounds like a good deal to me. Oh, I, I slept in it. I slept in it. Okay. Can I get the hose now? Yes, you can get the hose now. You guys are gross. You're gross. Kara, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Yeah, no problem. Hey, how about this first? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. One second. That's my cell phone. Uh, no problem. Hi, Kara. Uh, hi, hi, Eli. Were you under the desk? Yeah. Yep, thought I dropped a Skittle down here. So how'd you like the movie? So creepy. Right? <laughs> Just a weirdo living out his insane fantasies with people who are trying to help him. Totally. And I love how you make fun of that with the opening sketch. Uh, the opening sketch? Yeah, yeah, the one for the beginning of the show. Uh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, all this stuff about how you're the funniest one on the podcast and that whole monologue you wrote yourself about Ben Johnson. It's so pathetic. <laughs> totally. Mm, totally. I have to go to the bathroom. I will be back. All right, sorry about that. You guys ready to record? Bathroom. Oh, shoot. I didn't get to ask him the question I had about his first sketch. Oh, what's that? Well, who's Cecil and why does he fail to appreciate the love that no one else dares give him? You know what? I think we're going to skip that sketch. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with the two most terrifying words in all of Christian cinema, and therefore in all of cinema, <laughs> Rossetti Pictures. Oh, yeah. Chip Rossetti back in the hizzy. <laughs> I, I believe this is our seventh Chip Rossetti movie, by the way. <laughs> the third of which were directed and made in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> not surprised, not surprised. A banner year, a banner year. So Kara, just to fill you in or new listeners, Chip Rossetti is a 
Christian movie director who has written multiple books about himself as a Christian movie director. And the majority of the movies that we've watched, at least, have been from the perspective of his crazy computer programmer friend who lives out his fantasies in these movies. And I'm pretty sure that this is one of them. What? That's like really meta. Yeah. Oh, so the the very worst messages we've ever encountered in, in Christian movies have come Okay, the second worst messages we've ever encountered in Christian movies have come from Chip Rossetti. He's the one who did the accidental activist about that poor guy who had to make t-shirts for some kind of gay parade. <laughs> and the, the legendary unexpected bar mitzvah whose message can best be summed up by friends don't let friends be Jewish. Right? <laughs> yep. That sounds about right. <sighs> So this was actually very tame for a Rossetti movie. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I, I think I knew exactly how bad it was going to be as soon as I heard the first word of the song that we're getting, the Christmas song at the beginning. Oh, right. Oh, God. It was it, that, that voice singing Christmas. I'm like, OK, I'm all the way over it. We are eight <laughs> seconds in and I'm fucking done. Yeah, I wrote down music note, making up a Christmas song one line at a time. <laughs> so come on, give me the give me the best ones. <laughs> well, it's, so it's just Christmas word, Christmas word, Christmas word. And then when they, they, they couldn't think of something that rhymed with Santa Claus, she goes, puppies showing just their nose and paws. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with fucking Christmas. You're just making shit up. That doesn't even make sense. Right? <laughs> Near the end, they have a line that's put your finger on the ribbon while I tie the bow. And I was just like, come on, movie. You know. You know. And this is what I love the most. You know a movie's going to be awful when the title cards are all in Comic Sans. Yes! <laughs> they literally used Comic Sans. I can't. Well, and also, they're like stumbling around drunkenly across the screen, right? Like these, <laughs> these credits are moving all over the place like I'm having a stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and the camera was like jittery. I, I was wondering if it was my connection at first, but then the next scene was normal. Yeah. I was like, "What? who shot this? <laughs> Uh, Michael J. Fox, clearly. Oh, God, that's <laughs> awful. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so now we're, we're going to open the movie proper at this rental place. Now, enjoy this scene because it's the only one that doesn't happen in Chip Rossetti's goddamn living room okay? <laughs> in the whole fucking movie. So it just soak this ambiance up. It's all you're going to get. This UPS store is what this movie calls a set. <laughs> <laughs> and just to make clear what this place is, there are these little like printed signs, like they only had access to a mini printer. So there's these little yeah. printed signs like taped over the UPS signs <laughs> that say, we rent anything. Right. Yes. Yeah. Or everything. And it's like, wait, what does we rent anything mean? Like, how is this company listed with the Better Business Bureau? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, that that question is going to reoccur to us over and over again throughout the film. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So she and I love to they've got her like the opening dialogue is her going like mm, been pretty slow today. I wonder if we should close down. But that makes no goddamn sense because a the clock behind her says it's 11 o'clock in the goddamn morning. And B, there's a customer browsing <laughs> immediately in front of her. It's like being the last guy at the bar or something where they're like, yeah, well, we would close down if it wasn't for that one person who's still here, you know. <laughs> but just as she's thinking of closing it down, this guy walks up to the counter and says, I would you, you know, your sign here says, you rent anything. I would like to rent a Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the way, this character, the main character, Mrs. Westwood, is that her name? Weston. West Ann, Ann, Weston. Yeah. Anne Weston does not skip a beat. There is no one in this movie who will ever be like, that's a weird request. She, <laughs> her immediate response is, what kind of Christmas would you like? So that I thought to myself, is this a sequel to a first movie where they established a store that rents Christmases? <laughs> and meanwhile, all I can think is, is this a porno? Like, this is just in the opening scene. It's like, 
that kind of classic porno acting where he's like, hello, ma'am, I would like to rent a Christmas. <laughs> right. And she's like, what kind of Christmas would you like? How sir? am I going to pay for all of yeah, this? And she's Christmas. like weirdly yeah. in soft focus and like the yep. wall behind her is crystal clear. <laughs> You're just like, oh. what's happening? And the, oh, the audio, the sound quality is such an abomination. Mm. Like who mixed this movie? All their mics are at different levels. And I'm, I'm watching this at night in my living room and I'm having to like turn up and down the TV the whole time just to figure out what they're saying. It was an abomination. It's so, but somehow they're like illegible and clipping. I don't know how you even <laughs> do that. <laughs> oh, so bad. And she's playing, she's acting it like she's pretty sure it's going to be a porno and keeps being surprised when she's not fucking anybody at the end of the scene. <laughs> yeah. Right? This is the weirdest scat porn she's ever not shot. <laughs> right, because we didn't, we didn't even mention that really it actually opens up with this woman who's like, I don't know. She's like borderline mature sexy, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, say. absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And then this like weirdly young, I don't know, like 19, 21 year old like shop hand <laughs> who's just like mopping things up within, you know, close proximity of her. <laughs> like what even is about to happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. But yeah, so the guy comes up. He's like, I want to rent a Christmas. She's like, OK, what kind of Christmas? And he starts describing it in detail. She's writing down either what he's saying or she's writing down call the cops to slip to that 19-year-old. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> totally bored. I would like Christmas carols and five children. And her response to, I want to rent five children is, what genders would you like the children to be? The weirdest possible follow-up <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I literally wrote, wait, is this Christian movie seriously opening with a human trafficking request? <laughs> and yes, it is. And yep. this theme continues. The, this entire movie is about human trafficking. I was going to say opening, middling, closing. <laughs> it is a yeah. human traffic Christmas. Honestly, they should have gone with human traffic Christmas rather than the borrowed <laughs> Christmas. Also, I love how he like, keeps adding weird requests. You know, he's like, I want decorations and I want presents. And of course, oh, and human people. And um, and make sure that they dress like it's like Dickensian. Yeah, like I want this what? to be like weirdly turn of the century. <laughs> so back when America was great again. Yeah, this movie had this, this whole scene had this decidedly unintentional gas station scene from No Country for Old Men feel to it. <laughs> <laughs> and it so set the tone for the rest of the movie. And like it, at any minute, it seemed like it's going to make a hard right into horror movie and then have a plot, but it never does. Yeah. Or <laughs> porno. So, yeah. So he writes and, and he's like, she's like, okay, so uh, they, they a big Christmas. It's sure going to be expensive. And he's like, oh, don't worry. I have one of those fancy checkbooks where there's three checks stacked on top of each other. So clearly <laughs> I'm rich. Right. And then he just literally writes a check. Like, there's no discussion of cost. No. Nope. She just says it's not going to be cheap. And he's like, don't worry. I'm rich. Look at all these zeros. And I'm like, so rich people just get to choose how much things cost? <laughs> <laughs> he just writes, not going to be cheap on the check and hands it to her. <laughs> well, it's, it's so much sadder than that because we get to see what lots of money is to Chip Rossetti. And it's, it's $10,000. Yeah. He wants to rent... Six humans, $10,000 for two days work. Plus all that other shit. On Christmas. Right. Yeah. Not worth it. 1600 bucks for two days work. Not to mention the wife has to assume he's going to want to fuck her, right? Because he has <laughs> for a wife as well. It's very clear that he has no idea how much actual production costs because they shot this on a camcorder. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and and he's like, oh, deliver it to my home address. Here's my card. I'm like, your card has your home address on it? <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't even think about that. That's so fucking weird. Everything about this fucking movie is wrong. Nothing <laughs> makes any fucking sense. And I think they're supposed to be foreshadowing here, like setting up a romance because she's like, I walk by your house every day on the way to work. And he's like, I know. I watch you with binoculars from behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> to which she re reacts to it by being like, ooh, but yeah, but no, it was fancy. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. OK, so he leaves and then her and the kid, the 19 year old kid, that's Jimmy. Of course, it's fucking Jimmy. <laughs> it's it was, it was going to be Jimmy or Timmy. Right. So her and Jimmy are talking about like, wow, this would be a dumbass premise for a movie, huh? 
And she's like, mm, where am I going to find a wife and kids at this hour? I'm like, wait, like on normal days, you could just ring somebody. I'm like, cut to her buying chloroform and rope somewhere. Like, what the hell is going on with this film? Wait, and didn't we just establish that it was like 11 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. Like right, exactly. the middle of the workday at this hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. She's going to call the Actors Guild. <laughs> Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, right. She calls the actress girl. I, I would like four kids and a prostitute. <laughs> what? It's also like very clear that they live in a town that probably has a population of 600 people. <laughs> yeah, like, right. That town has an actor's <laughs> The, the <laughs> local actor's guild. <laughs> it's Dave, but, you know, he has a guild. So. <laughs> I guess because she's got the number in her phone, right? She, absolutely. <laughs> she doesn't look anything up. On fucking speed dial. Yeah. And they fade out before she can talk to the Actors Guild, but I really, really wanted to hear the rest of that conversation. Actors Union, where all the actors are. Can I help you? Yes, hello. I'm looking to rent a Christmas. So, sorry, a what? A, a Christmas. I need five children and a wife. For your Christmas. Oh, no, it's not for me. A man just walked into my store and asked me to find him five children and a wife. How much are they? Listen, we don't sell people. This is the actors union. If you'd like to hire some actors, I can refer you to some agencies we work with, but we don't just sell people. Oh, you don't? No, that would be horrible. Hmm. What if I call them extras? Oh, right. I can uh, have a cement mixer full of them out in front of your house tomorrow at 5 a.m. for $8. Wonderful. Do I have to feed them? No. No, you do not. All right. So, yeah. So so then we cut to, okay, we're going to cut to the fancy house full of mace. Now, okay, look, it's nicer than my house. Right. So I'm, I don't want to make fun of this, but like they're treating it like it's a 78 room mansion through the whole thing. But it's clearly like a two story middle class living room. Right. Oh, yeah. This house is not nicer than my house. This house has red walls and a mustard colored couch. Oh, no. OK. So now decorations wise, yeah, my house is nicer. <laughs> and the idea of maids is so, again, the world through Chip Rossetti's eyes, because the maids are also the cooks. And the family, and apparently, spoiler alert, they were the babysitters for the entire lives of this man who they're the same age as. It is fascinating. They're also wearing French maid outfits. It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of it. But they're like, one of them's like, you know, regular middle age. One of them's a little bit older. I can't tell again if this is like a mature porno fantasy or what, <laughs> but there's no way these maids are legitimate actors. Like they're obviously like his mom and his aunt or something like that. There's just no way that these people are not family members of his. Well, so what's amazing is that like for me, like when I saw so the names are their names are Martha and Bridget. Martha is, is the older of the two, the gray haired one. And when I saw Martha, I was like, oh, I know her. I've seen her in a, like 11 movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, Martha. Martha. Martha's been in 11 movies and she's still that bad. Yeah. No, no. OK, so I think this was her first or second movie, but she's in a, just a bunch of Chip Rossetti's movies. He has a crew. He was like Judd Apatow. You know, he has just he has this little crew. <laughs> this is not like Judd Apatow. It's pretty much just like Judd Apatow. Yeah, this is her Ed Norton breakout role, right? Once they saw her Martha, they were like, fuck, we got to get her in everything. <laughs> and she's got that like classic Christian, judgy Southern accent that I cannot get over. Uh -huh. Like that. My name's Martha and I am a maid. <laughs> I just can't. It's so gross. Uh -huh. Everything about this is so gross. So this is the point in the movie where in all caps I wrote, guys, this is somehow worse than any other movie you've made me watch. <laughs> it really is. So, okay. So first of all, we have not discussed the subplot of the movie, which is the battle that goes on between and the the lead character and the English goddamn language, right? <laughs> <laughs> this woman has so much trouble saying simple things. At one point, her line, she because she shows up where the maids are, and and her line is, "Did Mister Dell tell you, etc." She could not say those words in that order to save a fucking nation. 
Okay. Dim snim finner man. Yeah, and they they left them in. That's yes, the always. weirdest thing. Like they didn't just edit and keep the one take she nailed. Mm-mm. One take. We've gone back for less in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so far today. Yeah. I love that the first question she asks too, because she's there to like set up. The first question she asks, she's like, so. He said he wants a vintage Christmas. Does he mean a Christmas with no shmur shmur? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> How urban does he want the Christmas to be? Does that make sense? What kind of music should this Christmas play? All right. So one of my favorite things about this this opening scene is that they we set up that Martha just isn't going to take no shit off of no rental. Christmas planner person, whatever. But we have to have like a sort of an arc for her, right? So we have to have this moment where Anne and Martha mesh over the flowers. Over the flowers. <laughs> Amazingly <laughs> sloppily done. Well, now I like you kind of moment. I just what, love is that how what Chip that was? Yeah, that's how Chip Rossetti <laughs> thinks humans work. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, she literally asked her like, wow. Where did you get such brightly colored flowers at this time of year? And I'm like, I don't like Trader Joe's. There's a lot. Of, I don't <laughs> yeah, understand. Right. It doesn't matter what time of year. No, you her need answer them. is so eternally stupid. It's that she grows <laughs> them in her room. What? No, what no, does that even mean? <laughs> there's there's eleven species of flowers <laughs> in this bouquet, none of which grow in the same climate. Right, so clearly she doesn't have a bedroom and is forced to sleep in the greenhouse out right, she, <laughs> she, she sleeps in one of the many greenhouses this mansion has. <laughs> well, that makes sense because that would explain how the hell there was room for 11 more people to sleep in this house later. We'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, so she's like, okay, so yeah, so now you guys are all my friends. I complimented your flowers, so you're on my side. So, you know, the Actors Guild totally hooked me up. They're sending a bunch of kids over. No questions asked. <laughs> that was nice of them. By the way, does Mr. Dale have potentially a tragic backstory you guys could tell me <laughs> Dead about? Parents. <laughs> Dead parents. Dead parents. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't change the music. So it's like jingle bells. <laughs> Dead parents. <laughs> it is. It totally is. Again. Another fantastic moment through Chip Rossetti's eyes, right? Look, a lot of shitty Christmas movies. There hasn't been a happy Christmas since his parents die. But only Chip Rossetti could write the line, her father was killed immediately, but his mother lingered on as a vegetable for years. <laughs> you know, just, just that husk of a human being that really lets you know there is no soul and there's just a brain inside a machine. I mean, I cleaned her up as best as I could, but the smell of human feces, it sticks to the walls oh, of a place. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to planning this fucking Christmas. It's so weird. <laughs> right? <sighs> oh, Jesus. She's like, okay, so what Like, what gift would have a lot of emotional impact for him in Act 3? And they're like, uh, picture of his old house. And she's like, okay, picture of his old house. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got your answer right away. Also, Okay, you're making a Christmas movie and a sad millionaire is going to rent a Christmas. Oh, and he has no friends or family. Oh, he has family. His brother lives in California. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, and has a family. He has like nieces and nephews and shit. Yep. Go visit your brother, you fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> they would have you, I'd imagine. You're rich. <laughs> they put in our minds a scene where the millionaire was like, ha. Ah, California, fuck, that's LAX. You know, I'll just rent people. <laughs> I'll rent humans. I don't want to drive through LA traffic. I'll just, that's a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. Get a hooker. Also, this is the point in the movie where I'm starting to wonder like how he envisions maids. Like, I think he yep. thinks that they are encapsulated robot people that they that themselves have no ties. Like they weren't born, nope. I don't think. <laughs> because they obviously don't have their own families. They were just they they were created to serve him. Yeah. Right. They like they do not get the day off on Christmas. <laughs> Right. They, they're called in for a moment to open a couple of presents and then they're sent back to work on Christmas morning. Eventually, it's so <laughs> weird. They, it, it's Yeah. Ro robot like like they, they get plugged in at night or something. That's probably what <laughs> yeah. he thinks. Right, just another little horror movie I want to tease at. 
at one point, Miss Weston is like, do they have any uh, decorations in the basement? And the movie grinds to a halt as one of the maid goes, I don't know what's down there in the basement. <laughs> You're right. I was so hoping for that to be the next scene. Yep. They never talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they do later, later. And I don't want to like, yes! spoiler alert, when they open up the box full yep. of ornaments and it's like, is that blood in the box? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll get there. It's so fucked up. That's the most fucked up moment in the entire goddamn movie. But before we get there, I, there's two more things I wanted to highlight about this scene. Number one, okay, so Anne asks Martha, the, the older of the two maids, she's like, hey, would you like to go shopping with me for these imaginary kids? We're going to need presents. To which Martha says, this is an actual goddamn line. I don't know. I have some misgivings. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how people talk through this entire goddamn movie. And then Anne says, and I quote, just think it of buying for the play. <laughs> now, that is the <laughs> second time in 20 minutes that she has used that series of words just think it of because she can't think she can't say the words just think of it as right think it of we're 20 minutes in by the time she does that for the second fucking time but yeah but she eventually coaxes martha out to buy presents like she's some kind of shopophobic hermit <laughs> and i really really want to be there for that shopping trip <laughs> Hey, welcome to Big Toy Store. Have you seen this cool game? No, that looks stupid. I'm shopping for five children. What do you recommend? It's, it's not stupid. It's a, it's a very cool game. Uh, uh, wait, what, is, what are the kids like? I don't know. You don't know? Well, how do you not know? Well, the master of the house I made for is renting orphans for Christmas. What are orphans like? Rented? I Probably the same as other normal kids I get. So are you sure you're not a Victorian ghost? No. Very well. I shall take a wooden train, two dollies, a sled, and a Baxter Baker full of lithium. Oh, okay, we don't sell that last thing and I'm, I'm, I'm actually just here to sell this. Good day. You know, this sketch is giving me flashbacks. Me too. It was not a stupid game. People liked it a lot. People did like it. All right, okay, so now we get Anne showing back up at the mansion. She found that picture of Mr. Dale's old house from two minutes ago. <laughs> there are no pins that this movie does not set up that it does not immediately knock back down. <laughs> exactly, right? Don't don't make him wait, I guess. Uh, it's amazing, too, because at, at this point, Martha's like, oh, look at this photograph. And she sniffs the photograph and she's like, I can almost smell the lilacs. And I'm like, well, why did you did you want to check for sure to see if you could first? Is that why you sniffed it? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, God, the, I didn't even catch that part where they set up the lilacs. Oh, it's very clever. There's a lot of layers to Chip Rossetti's <laughs> writing. Sometimes you have to watch him two or three times to catch everything. Yeah. The only note that I made on this entire scene is I think they shot this entire movie on autofocus. Fuck yeah, they <laughs> did. It's so crazy. Like when they show the photo, they show it over the shoulder. So envision this, guys. You're looking through a camera lens over the shoulder at a flat two-dimensional object. And somehow the scene is in like full resolution, but the photo is low res. Like I don't, I don't understand <laughs> how that even works with modern cinematography. <laughs> There's moments where, like, you can see the camera start to focus into a reflection or something like that. <laughs> it's really awful, yeah. Oh. So, okay, there's also a great moment where, like, uh, <laughs> the two maids keep talking over Anne's lines as she starts some, like, Eli and he's fucking <laughs> with me, and I just love that so much. <laughs> oh, my God. I was that. No, you go. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I would have Every Zoom second meeting. kept. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, but then just then Jimmy, the, the younger guy from the beginning of the movie shows up and he's got bad news. It turns out that someone at the Actors Guild was like, what the fuck did they want to do? And no, they can't rent children. <laughs> yeah. Three of the children don't want to miss Christmas, but two of them, two of them, again, the world through Chip Rossetti's eyes have measles. What? what? They might as well have milk leg. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird. She goes, why can't they come? And he says, well, two kids have measles and the other three don't want to come by themselves. 
Wait, wait, wait. What? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. I want to spend a doctoral thesis <laughs> on the insanity that's encapsulated in that excuse, right? There are so many other ways to get there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And literally, literally hot mom and like weird hot pool boy are like, oh, darn, we're so bad at human trafficking. What are we going to do? <laughs> what a farce we've created now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's OK. Because Jimmy's got a solution. See, he's an orphan who lives at the orphanage. You know, one of those 35-year-old orphans they keep at the orphanage. (laughs) Why don't they just grab some orphans from the orphanage for a day rental? And they're literally using the word orphan and orphanage over and over as if that's a thing that exists yeah, in right. this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's like that, that you can just like go pick up some orphans from the from orphanage. The orphanage. <laughs> like what? <laughs> and they're fucking on this, by the way. Like they're they have immediately know which orphans they'd hire yes, if they need right. to hire out humans. Exactly. They're like, you know, I was just thinking the other day of which orphans I would cast. <laughs> So they're like naming orphans. You know who'd make a great third daughter? <laughs> they practically say the names at the same time. Like, Santa, da, 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 da. Yes. And this is the point where it comes into crystal clear focus. Not not the actual camera work, but but the 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 idea of this movie that the whole movie is predicated on the white savior trope. Oh, yes. Right? This is yeah. just this one guy, this sad, sat guy who's probably a serial killer, like, <laughs> fantasizing about saving a bunch of orphans. That's what the whole movie is at this point forward. And and some poor woman that has to work all day behind some counter. Keep in mind that Anne owns the business, right? Like, we've established that she owns her own business. She seems to be a very successful person, but we later established that like none of that matters because she doesn't have a man to take care of her. Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> There's also this amazing moment where like apparently the girl that Jimmy has in mind to play the oldest sister is his crush. Right. They established that. Oh, really? I didn't get that either. <laughs> oh, they establish it hard. They revisit multiple revisitations. <gasps> oh, I must have been like scratching my nose or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, like I said, you got to know, well, I think what you know Rosetti is a director, you know, it's like when you know Tarantino, you're looking for the foot shots, right. it's like that, <laughs> yeah. So what's the point, though? Why does he do that? Is it just because there's he's, like, no, weirdly horny? I Because, like, yeah. I, I, there's, because, yeah, he's got something about watching orphans fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It makes I no know. sense. I want to know. It like it makes all the relationships weirder. It doesn't yeah. play into any other moment in the movie. Yeah, there's all these like threads that start to get pulled, and then he's like, "Yeah, just leave them. <laughs> just, I don't care. I can't. I can't follow through with that. This is hard." And truth be told, I don't think there's an actual script. I think there's just like scene headers, and then they're like, "Just get to the point where we change Jimmy's name to Jack." I don't care how you do it. Just yeah. figure it out as you go. Waiting for Guffman style. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's how Chip works. <laughs> honestly, yeah. look, after watching several of his movies, yeah, I honestly think every word of this is written down and that's actually just <laughs> how he writes. And, and then he insists that people read it with the misspellings and grammatical errors as he's got them and everything. I honestly think that's how it goes. It, it's so it's so weird to think that like there's a, a method to any of this madness, but I really think there is. Oh, so so can we get some clarity on Jimmy needing to change his name to Jack? Because in my view, dude never met Jimmy. He saw him behind the counter, didn't know what his name was. Not necessary to change his name. He could have just been Jimmy. Would not have mattered. I want everyone to burn in a Christmas fire. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. And I, there's also this great moment where they're like, all right, well, those are the five orphans that will invite over to have a great Christmas. Everyone else can stay at the fucking orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the movie starts to feel a little bit guilty about that. And they're like, well, maybe the other ones could be carolers and we could each give them a cookie and then they could go back to the orphanage. OK, much better. Much better. All right. Oh, but so. carolers that don't sing. Which yes. We'll get there. We'll oh, get there. Oh, my by God. The way, in a second. I was so excited <laughs> to talk about the carolers. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this movie is borrowing children. And Andrew has told me very explicitly, anytime that happens in one of Eli's movies, stop and call him and make sure it's okay to keep going. So we're (laughs) going to do that. But we'll be back in a flash with even more of 
the borrowed Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. can't forget my shades. Uh, Santa, what are you doing? It's almost Christmas. Oh, hello there, Twinkle Toes. Santa's taking this year off. Wait, what? What? Why? 2020 has made Santa's job impossible. Can't give people trips or travel gear or even games for more than one good little boy or girl. I'm going to Cancun. Wait, Santa, before you go, why don't you just give everybody Raycons? Raycons? They aren't ready for that kind of power, Twinkle Toes. That would be a Ran Contra all over again. No, 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 no. Raycon wireless earbuds. With seamless Bluetooth pairing and a comfortable noise-isolating fit, you can listen right out of the box and keep listening for hours. The audio quality is amazing, comparable to what you get from premium brands, except Raycons start at half the price. Best of all, this is something they can use for calls or music, for work or play, at home or on the go. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Wow, that does sound pretty good. Oh, they are. Raycon sent us a pair to try, and they're so excellent our wives stole them. And Raycon's being generous for the holidays, so on top of their everyday great prices, they're offering our listeners 15% off right now. Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Oh, Twinkle Toes, you've saved Christmas. Yeah, you know, happy to help. Um, now, sorry, uh, did you imply that you were behind a Ran Contra? Okay, hear me out. The Khomeini had been really, really good that year. H- had he, though? No. Comet Ping Pong Pizza, Secret Child Sex Hotline. Uh, yes, I would like to rent a Christmas. Sir, you don't have to use code on this phone. How many children you want to buy? Oh, um, five. Genders? Uh, three girls and two boys. Italian tricycle. Got it. Um, excuse me. Sir, I'm on the phone. I'll be right with you. I I want a Norman Rockwell Christmas as well. Okay, outfits are extra. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, And of course, I'll need a wife. Okay, do you want an actual blood relation to the children? Because that's extra. I guess not, then. Excellent. Now, do you have any specific requests? Water sports? Scat? Um... Well, no water sports. It's December. Excuse me. S- sorry, sir. What are you hiring these people for? Uh, to keep, keep me company at Christmas. Keep you company or keep you company? I think the second one. Gross. <laughs> Some people. Okay. Now, Mitch McConnell, how can I help? Mine broke. I need a new one. Again? Yep. and we're back and we're going to rejoin the action with Anne explaining all the orphan renting details to Bridget Bridget the uh, non-Martha maid (laughs) and Bridget is so excited to surprise Martha with this information (laughs) oh yeah she is right right because Martha didn't like the idea of buying presents for rich ass actor kids (laughs) (laughs) so she's like Martha you'll never guess what and Martha's like what what and she's like we got fucking orphans and she's like don't fuck with me don't fuck with me she's like no seriously we got orphans she's like you know I love orphans Oh, yeah, this is that weird part where she's like, she she knitted scarves for all the children, but was truly concerned they wouldn't actually need them. Yes. Thank God we got cold, shivering children for the scarves. <laughs> I didn't want to give any spoiled-ass brats who already had a scarf this shit. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, but she's not just going to make cookies. Now she's going to make orphan cookies. <laughs> God, it was so weird. Oh, yeah. And Mr. Dale, they ask about Mr. Dale's favorite cookie. And he says, oatmeal raisin. What is wrong with him? Fuck this guy. He's a fucking monster. He's How a am I supposed killer. to feel about this character? His yeah. favorite fucking cookie has raisins in it. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I'd just like to say, as someone who's representing the oppressed minority of oatmeal raisin lovers in our audience right now. Oh, God. I your pain. Of course you are. Sometimes you want a pancake. (laughs) The the, the mango nectar of cookie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so... But they're very excited about all the cookies and the orphans. And Bridget has brought a box that has some old decorations in it. 
not old, brand new, clearly oh, yeah, brand yeah. new decoration. <laughs> Picked up at the Dollar General that afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's a hundred year old light bulb that they had. <laughs> yeah. So, no, okay, but this box, as Kara has already mentioned, very clearly has had human body parts in it at some point. <laughs> Oh, right? no it's really weird. It's like they got their set department, which was, you know, his like niece or something. Right. To use like old dried looking blood paint, like brown paint and like paint drip marks on the inside of the box. Like they intentionally did this. This isn't just an old dirty box. It's a brand new box that they painted drip marks on the inside of. Why did they do that? Or... Between this entire cast, none of them had a box that didn't already have blood stains in it, <laughs> which was my, oh my God, that's a way better theory. explanation. Yep, that makes sense. Makes sense. And I think the part that bothered me the most was not that the box was, quote, bloody, but that it was filled with glass ornaments, none of which were wrapped. No, nope. Like, it was just full <laughs> loose, of, like, loose glass shards. <laughs> loose like, glass <laughs> ornaments <laughs> and hammers. Just, well, that explains the blood, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, what I love about it is it's in completely the wrong size. So like she keeps t she takes out like two different things and it's like well that's all that would fit in that little ass box right <laughs> yeah, right it's like the star topper and an enormous globe <laughs> <laughs> yeah right like a comically oversized Christmas ornament too yeah yeah I think the only thing that would fit in there otherwise is maybe a human foot yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah, she, yeah right she's like a, an ornament and a star and well that's all that's in that box. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay somebody explain this part to me because i didn't get this and i actually did watch this part a second time to see if maybe i could bridget brings up at this point that martha has a nativity scene that she would like to set up oh my god and she i don't get it she brings it up as though she's afraid that Anne is going to beat her with a stick <laughs> for mentioning it it's so weird she's like being so cagey about it <laughs> and it comes back around multiple times and they never explain it. Like, they really draw attention to it. And they never explain it. Like, oh, I'm putting up the nativity scene. Now, like, later the orphans are like, what's that? She's like, oh, it's a nativity scene. And they're like, okay, lady. Like, and, whatever. And then as before she can explain what it is, the scene interrupts her. And they're like, oh, we're moving on. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. It's almost like they, they literally change the music. Like, the tone of the scene changes. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. And is this all just to be like, these people are Christian? So that's actually what I think it is. Is like, uh oh, oh, what if Mythis Weston isn't Christian? Can we put up our nativity scene? And it was like, don't worry, I am the religion that ninety percent of the people in this country <laughs> pretend to be. Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right. Okay. You're right. You're exactly right. Because they have to live in that fantasy universe where everyone else is offended by nativity scenes. You're right. Mm. That's exactly what it is. Well, see, I think part of what fucked me up is because, because like Kara said, they changed the music here and their music cues in this are always insane, right? They're never, they have never have anything to do with what's going on on screen. And also the actress that plays Anne has this random ASMR delivery sometimes, <laughs> right? For, for like no reason, suddenly it's a weird ASMR makeup tutorial or something going on. <laughs> okay, she's just like clicking her fingernails on her lap. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like. exactly. <laughs> Cutting construction paper very precisely or something. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> okay, since you mention makeup tutorials, I need to talk about Anne's eyeshadow in this scene. <laughs> Okay. Eli, I love you so much. It's, you like you spent like a good percentage of your notes focusing on her. Because it's the crazy it grows like it's of its own <laughs> volition. It's bananas. It's okay. Here's what I assume. I, I created such a sad short story in my head. Okay. The woman who plays Anne in this movie is an unsexed Christian who's just, you know, she shits out babies and then she dies and goes to heaven where Jesus will give her a hug. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time in her life she was allowed to put on makeup because hot water burned baby. So she just went to <laughs> Sephora and dunked her eyes first into gold, <laughs> then into purple. <laughs> then she saw a clown who was like, no, 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 way too subtle. So then she put <laughs> blue over that... I, Literally, William Baldwin's makeup a couple weeks ago when he was in the weird 
red face <laughs> blindfold is less distracting than this woman's <laughs> eyeshadow. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, no. Good analogy. If you listen to every episode, it's important that you listen to every episode. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> all right. Okay. So then all the orphans show up, uh, even though, by the way, okay, so Anne got off the phone with the orphanage five minutes ago. We haven't cut to a different scene, but the orphans are here. They have a cannon, apparently, that they fire well, them out. We don't, we don't cut to scenes in this movie. The whole movie's mm. shot in one room. It, it really is. Yeah, exactly. And there are like three time cuts in it. But other than that, yeah. And my my guess is is that this was originally written as a play, right? That that's my my assumption. But it's also it's Chip Rossetti, so it's also entirely possible that he's like, well, I've got to film it all in my living room, so <laughs> I think I'm up to the challenge. Oh, and the the orphans file into the room quietly, and they're supposed to be making noise because they're excited to be in the house. But these kids suck, so they don't make noise. But that doesn't stop the lady playing the head of the orphanage <laughs> from, from going, doing yeah. her. Children be quiet line. So what we yeah. see is children <laughs> quietly file into the room and she's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's amazing. And also, did you guys notice that all of these orphans were like really well dressed? They're all wearing like diamond earrings. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like the whole shtick is supposed to be that these are like sad, poor orphans, right? Like it's the classic white savior theme throughout this whole movie and then the orphans come in and they're like yeah we're doing great like we're doing a lot of side gigs yeah <laughs> like, apparently it's insane well there was this disturbing bit of dialogue here too where like one of the the young girls turns to Anne and she goes so uh, so we're here to do a play and Anne goes kind of and I'm like run kids run <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys know plays you know slavery it's somewhere <laughs> In Imagine a, those. the exact middle. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So we meet a bunch of kids all at once here. Uh, none of them are really going to matter to the story because none of them really get personalities except for Letty and Willie. I was going to say, except for Willie, my favorite fucking character <laughs> of all time. Well, and dad never bothers to learn any of their names. No. Anyway. no. Yeah, but Willie is amazing. Willie enters and is like, sorry, what's the plot of this movie? And they're like, uh, you got rented for Christmas? And he's like, that's fucking stupid. Can I eat this? I want to eat. <laughs> I'm starving. It's true. His only lines revolve around food. And then later when he says he has a, a hollow leg. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, it's so good. It's <laughs> amazing that someone gave this child dad jokes to say. With a totally straight face, right? It's, you've got a hole in your stomach, kiddo. And I think you might have a hollow leg, too, right? Which is what Uncle Steve says when you ask for seconds of mashed potatoes. Oh, that's what that is? I was yep. so confused. I was like, this child has a really weird imagination. <laughs> well, of course you were confused because Willie delivers that line by saying, I have a hole in my stomach. And a hollow leg. Like, we, I've seen fucking <laughs> excerpts from the Hotel Rwanda. Like he's trying to get money for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought he was doing Tiny Tim. Like he was wearing right. the hat and everything. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, and what's so funny to me is that they're trying to play this as like this humorous, you know, oh, the kids, all they're all ever thinking about is eating all, you know, the kids will always want candy or whatever. But the problem is, is that we've established that these are orphans, right? Right. So the whole trope of an orphan going, please, sir, can I have some more? And us all <laughs> laughing and going, tee hee, hungry orphan, give me a break. It's right? so like, sad. <laughs> let's finish up the negotiations first, at least. <laughs> but it, it gets darker because these orphans in this scene, with the exception of Willie, who's my fucking hero, are like, please, sir, can I have some less? Yeah. <laughs> All of the orphans <laughs> in this scene volunteer to pretend to be this man's child for free. Oh, yeah. They're like, I'm going to give back the money because this guy is so sad. It's like, no, kid, this is your chance. Fucking take him for everything he's worth. What is yeah, wrong he with you? Yeah, he didn't go to California where his brother lives. It's not all... <laughs> he's just an asshole. It's all. <laughs> also, this is the point in the movie where I realize that the soundtrack is literally just, you know, Chip's son, like, banging on the piano. Yes. Yep. Like, it's like they just recorded his piano lesson and played it in the background. <laughs> oh, my God. That's exactly what it sounds like, too. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, well, it, this is also... The movie has apparently thinks it's going to spring the fact on us that, that Anne is going to play the mom in this play. I know, right? And it's so obvious from the <laughs> Yes. 
<laughs> this is where all the kids are like, we want you to be our mom for the purposes of this play. And they're like, and she's like, why? And they're like, because that's because because we're not going to pay another fucking actors at this point it wouldn't make sense otherwise right like they have no real reason for that they don't know her or anything oh see i really wanted a hooker to show up and just be super confused by this whole christmas she was like <laughs> hey where are the kids leaving oh that would have been amazing i want it like like a rachel dratch kind of character Absolutely. just yeah, like exactly. stumbling in. <laughs> oh my god that would so no that would have made for the farce this movie thought it had right <laughs> right if just one person was like okay i'm here to fuck this guy right oh the the kids are here. <laughs> uh, if the kids want to watch, it's extra. All right. <laughs> oh my god, it's I'm so not putting bad. nothing with pine needles inside me until I see money. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh <God. laughs> Jesus, you gonna drink that candle? <laughs> <laughs> Eli, how have you gone this far without a single Epstein reference? <laughs> oh, well done. Oh, it's yeah. in my notes. Right. Yeah, I have one of my because when the kids get in, they're like, all right, everyone off with your coats. And I wrote, oh, it's one of these trips. Is Mr. <laughs> Epstein here again? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, OK, but that just then one of the maids runs in and she's like, everybody run. Mr. Dale is coming. And they all run off as though Mr. Dale is unaware that this is happening. <laughs> no, he paid for this. He asked for this. I don't understand this scene at all. Everybody's like nervously running away and hiding and 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 somebody's dropped their scarf and the maid is trying to hide the scarf so Mr. Dale doesn't see it. But there's no reason why they would do any of that. But also, why is the maid so like bad at hiding the scarf? Like she <laughs> right? hides it by looking at it and then running. Like I don't understand. And just kind of scooting it an inch and a half with her feet instead. <laughs> Instead of just leaning over and picking it up <laughs> or kicking it under the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. God. It's bad. Yeah. So, all right. So everybody's running and hiding. Oh my God. They forgot the coats. Oh my God. They didn't get the scarf. He makes it home. Right. We're all writing in our notes. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> and, and so, but he's like, Hey, Fred, this is a character we haven't met yet is going to meet me here for lunch to pick up that present he got for his wife. Oh, that's what that was? I thought it was like a really weird business meeting on his couch. Well, they, they but then they were like, yeah, but we're going to probably want to talk business and eat lunch. You know, oh, OK. Wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So why don't you why don't you scurry on to the kitchen maid and make some soup? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the world through Chip Rossetti's eyes. What do you eat over at a business meeting? Probably soup and sandwiches. I can't think of a better food for a business meeting than liquid. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so she goes she goes off fred shows up instantly by the way he must he, <laughs> mr dale had to have closed the door in fred's face <laughs> right yeah exactly if we assume he had to get like get out of like park in the driveway or something he had to be walking up at that point wait and also don't rich people have garages like what rich people park in the front of their houses right rich people park in the garage and they come through the garage door everything about this movie is horrible i hate it <laughs> it's so stupid well and then so so fred's like okay explain the plot of this movie to me again and he's like yeah i i read it at christmas now this is the part of the script where chip rosetti felt the need to go back and explain why in the hell this guy wandered into a rental place in the first place that rents like you know, couches and TVs and shit and asked to rent a Christmas. But the only explanation that Chip Rossetti can come up with was, well, I was walking by that rental place and I thought I should go in here and see if they'll rent me a Christmas. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's all he's got. <laughs> and he literally is like, yeah, no, but I was totally joking when I ordered humans for Christmas. But the human trafficker I was talking to took me seriously and they didn't want to look stupid. So here I am buying people. Lol. <laughs> and he adds a layer of crazy insanity to it when he explains to Fred that he has asked for a wife and his exact family. Oh, you're right. He's like, yeah, no, Fred, I went for three Girls and two boys, just like you. Hey, can I cut off your face and wear your skin for Christmas? <laughs> and how does Fred respond? <laughs> he responds by like nodding his head in agreement. Mm -hmm, seems reasonable. Yep, yep, but look, mm -hmm, there's yep. a flowery scarf on the ground. Are you a fag? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so, so horrible. It's hey, so weird. Gay scarf. Are you gay? Are you gay with your gay <laughs> so, scarf? They've set this 
scarf up. Everybody's trying to hide the scarf and they can't quite hide it or whatever. And so they feel that they need to pull the trigger on it. So Fred drops something. He reaches over and he's like, pulls out this flowery scarf. And he's like, why are you wearing this, you queer mo? And then we just... <laughs> We fade to black. It's the end of the we don't even see him be like, no. <laughs> it's like, like it wouldn't be a Chip Rosetti movie without some like blatant homophobia. I, you know what? That might be it. That might be the the fucking barefoot shot of Chip Rosetti's films. <laughs> it's so bad. And what I love too is like, really, we could do some classic kind of film school, you know, ripping this apart. There's the scene is that Fred is sitting there with a pen for his soupy business meeting. <laughs> and he like accidentally <laughs> drops the pen. And literally they shot that. They took a B cam yes. and shot like the pen falling. <laughs> yes. Like stopped on the pen, <laughs> noticed it was next to the scarf, and then he leans over to get the scarf. Like we didn't need to see that. That's implied. <laughs> In case we were confused by pen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so good. All right. So now we cut to the kids doing a, I guess, dress rehearsal. And Willie would like to know, as would I, why the kids have to be dressed like Dickensian paper boys or what yes. the hell are we even going for here because no nothing else about it is a period piece no. no they don't change the way they talk they don't change their food it's not like a whole you know like a lark no exactly. they're literally just like make the kids dress like it's 1900 and she doesn't dress like it's 1900 right. just the children <laughs> and mr dale doesn't dress like it's 1900 just the children yeah Oh, yeah, he's wearing, like, a business casual suit with, like, a mint-colored button-down shirt or something. Yeah, he it's puts, weird. On, puts on a suit for Christmas Day, too, later. <laughs> I don't get this guy at all. But, yeah, but they're all giving him, like, the, this again, this really pornographic, all right, everybody be sure to call him Daddy when he gets home oh, moment. Oh, gross. Yeah, call it's him, so the little girl calls him Daddy, and the guy whispers, call him Daddy louder, and I wrote in my notes, the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> <laughs> And then they shout, he's coming. And I wrote shortly after the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> and it would be one thing if it was just the little girl, Letty, that called him daddy. But like the 22-year-old daughter yes. who's been away at college calls him yep. daddy. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> well, and again, this is amazing because this ends up being this weird callback. We never hear from this nativity scene again. Right. But like Bridget is just starting to set up the nativity scene. And one of the kids says... Miss Bridget, what are you doing over there? And she says, well, I'm setting up the nativity scene. It's about, and somebody's like, the dad guy's done work. He's here. We're, just <laughs> shut up. Shut up about that. And we never talk about it again. <laughs> no, but it still has that whole weird music cue. Everything's slowing down. Like, dun, dun, dun. Here comes the creepy nativity scene. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then it's like, just over. Just let's forget. This had to be a blackface nativity scene. They exist. <laughs> Oh, right. I googled them. <laughs> the only way this makes sense in the context is that Martha was like, I ain't doing the movie unless I get to bring my Bojangles Christmas scene. Oh, and, they were like, oh. and then like the editor that they hired was basically like, this is even beyond the I'm pale for me. Like, I'm just going to cut right here. He's never going to know this. Uh, or Amazon was like, look, man, you can have your movie on here, but we're taking it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys notice that there's a scene or there's a part at this point where like, because the children have come home from college, right? Mm -hmm. So they come home during the scene, the two older ones, because they need to have their own separate entrance, the son and the daughter, which means they're over 18. Am I wrong? If they're yeah. in college, right, they're right, over absolutely, 18. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so they're legal. And first of all, the maid is like, look at how much you've grown to the boy. Like, do boys grow in college? <laughs> like, I don't think that's... <laughs> I think they're like men. Like right, you're, when yeah, you're 18, pretty much, yeah. you're not going to get bigger. It's really weird. And then also there's a scene where like this like eye contact moment between the oldest son and the father. And like one of them says something to the other and the other has this look in his eyes. And I'm like, wow. So they have like a deep psychological like issue between the two of them. <laughs> like there's a backstory built in. It's probably the only good acting in the whole movie. Oh. And by the way, Mr. Dale will spend this entire first scene acting like he has no idea what's happening. Right? <laughs> no. It's like, you ordered right, right? This. Like he's Nick Cage in The Family Man. Like he was in some <laughs> drunken stupor in that opening scene and doesn't remember that he hired these people. 
<laughs> oh, and then we get a recurring oatmeal raisin like moment because she like shoves one in his mouth oh. and he's like, oh, oatmeal raisin. It's my favorite. How did how did you know that? So sexual. She forces this cookie <laughs> into his mouth with such a fervor. We watch the actor drop his character and become afraid for his life as she <laughs> funnels an entire fucking hubcap sized oatmeal raisin cookie <laughs> down the throat of this soap opera actor on Christmas break. And then once again, the kid is like, I'm hungry, you guys. Yeah, like, right. I'm really hungry. And they're like, shut up, child. Shut up, you orphan. Even we tell you to. <laughs> shut up, hungry orphan. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we can feed the kid, I guess we have to have that weirdly intimate, can you tie my apron moment? Oh, oh. And for Chip Rossetti, this scene was hardcore porn. You guys felt it, right? <laughs> you fucking felt like when someone else thinks something is sexual and it's not. But you all of a sudden realize that you have to leave this Uber. That's this scene in this movie. <laughs> There's also, okay, so everybody comes in and they're like, oh, daddy, uh, big hugs for daddy. And then somebody asks, so where's Letty? That's the youngest girl. And somebody goes, she's sleeping. I'm like, she was just there one minute ago. <laughs> I started to think that that actress got fed up and stormed off the fucking set and they had to like make up for it. You know, think of uh, an excuse why she wasn't there. Oh, God, it's so bad, you guys. It's so bad. Oh. Yeah, so, okay, so we've established that Letty's narcoleptic and Willie's starving. So they go off to eat. <laughs> and then we we cut to, I guess it's after dinner, Letty is is laying by the tree staring at the presents half asleep. Yeah. yeah. And all the kids are in their pajamas, except mom and dad are still like business casual, which is weird. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like the old children are in like footy pajamas. Yeah, right, yeah. With the it's little, like so uncomfortable. The ass window and shit because it's 1837 in this Christmas for whatever reason. <laughs> and this is where they do the what are we going to do next summer role play, which is fucking terrifying, right? He's rented them for a day, but he's like, what do you want to do next summer? And she's like, oh, I'm going to ramble about on my favorite horse. And I just wrote my notes. I was like, no, was that turn of the century backpacking across Europe? I'm frightened. What's happening? <laughs> I, I'm thinking, why not have fun with this? Right? Because you could just say it. Like, I'd be like, well, dad, I'm going to like last summer. I'm going to take back that job castrating bulls with throwing knives in the Tijuana <laughs> circus. I mean, you could just say whatever you want now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And instead, he chooses to be a camp counselor. And also, he wants to go to the beach and go fishing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. It's so bad. It's so bad. And she keeps calling him daddy just <laughs> over and over. So. Oh. Oh, and then they're like, okay, I guess it's time to read a Christmas story. <laughs> and I'm thinking like the movie, a Christmas story, but it's like the actual Christmas story from the Bible. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So, and yeah, it's, it, they're like, oh yeah, it's our family tradition. And then they start reading this decidedly creepy ass story out of the Bible, right? Just like so that this movie counts for gam, I guess. Yeah. And they read the whole thing. <laughs> like there's no, they don't cut anything out and it opens up like in Syria, which I'm really surprised they left in and didn't change it to like Cleveland. Or something. <laughs> like, and then we're sitting here watching it and all of us in our notes are like, oh, he's just going to keep He's just, oh, he's still reading this. Okay. So what? this is like a solid 10 minutes of him reading out of the Bible. And we get to watch the actors realize in terror how long that story is. It's <laughs> yes! like, there was yes. a great survey to be fucked. There's like 14 pages left. <laughs> ah! No, this is the part where they earned their money because as they pan around, well, first of all, there's always like one person boning the shot. I love it. Yes, like, uh... They're showing the dad and mom and there's like kids hair kind of like and then like the boom comes down. But they, they pan around and other than the kid that's asleep through the whole movie, everybody else is like smiling, like creepy smiling, mm -hmm. like looking deep into dad eyes and creepy smiling about the fucking virgin birth and I'm like this is not fun no child thinks this is fun this is trauma we all have this collective trauma in our minds from when we were children well it was trauma watching this yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so throughout all of this we're, we're panning across the kids we keep zooming in on the sleeping little girl which is creepy as fuck we, we, they have the weird ornament animations 
Right? We had that for a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, that was weird. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing about this scene is that somebody cued the goddamn carolers outside too early. Yes, they fucking did. And he still has like a page and a half of shit to read. (laughs) And you can hear the carolers out there like trying to do the fourth verse of Silent Night and nobody (laughs) knows it and shit. Oh, my God. No way. Okay, so because I'm like so annoyed by the sound quality of this movie, I'm turning it up and down the whole time. So for me... I didn't hear the carolers at all. So there's this weird moment where they're like, the carolers, can you hear them? And I'm like, no, lady, I can't. No. <laughs> can, just, can you hear them? answer the door and it's like dead silent. And I'm like, what? Did you, did you take that pill that makes you good at chess again? I don't hear any carolers. <laughs> Well, okay. So what? here's what's fucking funny is that while he's telling his story, they have an instrumental version of Silent Night playing in the background. And then when the carolers show up, they're singing Silent Night, but not in the same time. Different timing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then and then they invite the kids in and they sing Silent Night. They sing. <laughs> the well, only song they know. <laughs> would we say sing? <laughs> In the moment they open their mouths, we realize these six Ooh. extras not only don't know the song Silent Night, I'm going to guess have never spoken the English language before. <laughs> or encountered nah. music, yeah. There is one little girl who doesn't even fucking pretend, and she <laughs> is the hero. She's that lady who jumped on top of the pressure cooker at the Boston bombing to me. She's just oh, like, God. man... <laughs> <laughs> she opens her mouth twice. That's it. It's like, I don't understand Christmas caroling anyway. Personally, it's weird to me. Like, first of all, I don't think you're supposed to invite them into your house, right? They're just supposed to stand on the so. porch. But so they invite them into their house and they just stand there. And it's literally like three feet from your face. People are singing at you and you're supposed to just sit there and smile like it's enjoyable for you. It's literally my version of hell, right? Like my worst nightmare. <laughs> and, it's and so singing. it's extra oh. weird to me that they're like, let's do a whole scene in this movie where not only do we have to awkwardly sit around listening to people who can't sing, sing, but the audience has to awkwardly sit around listening to us listening to people who can't say anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I just have to talk about this one moment because it's so important to me. Martha <laughs> comes out with cookies for the carolers and the scene is nonsense. It doesn't matter. But right. one of the kids tries and fails to get a cookie. Yes. Four yes. times in a row. And sad. doesn't get a cookie. No. And, and then they send them all the fuck out. <laughs> it is it is the best short film I have seen <laughs> in years. This little girl being like, okay, I just got, ah, fuck, okay. You know what? I'll get one of these from the universe. Oh, fucking cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So, yeah. So they, they give each of the, and I love the idea that five of these kids get like presents and a couple nice nights in a mansion and shit, and the rest of them get a cookie. But yeah, so they give all these orphans a cookie, send them on their way. And then everybody's like, all right, time to give daddy and mommy a hug and go to bed. And I'm like, okay, this is getting weird and porny again. Stop it. (laughs) Also, I guess I didn't realize that we were supposed to be in this gigantic mansion at this point. And I'm just like, what, this guy has five extra bedrooms in his fucking house? Yeah. (laughs) And this is the part where I'm like, oh, they're totally going to fuck now. Like, obviously, what do you do? You're like an extra playing a guy's wife overnight (laughs) you know like where is this gonna go yeah like i'm very interested to see where this goes but of course then they're like we made up a spare bedroom for you and i'm like of course they did because it's so fucking christy yeah well no that's why i put my break here right because it's the only time anyone's ever curious what's going to happen next at any point in this movie (laughs) oh shit i'm sorry you can cut all that out then (laughs) sorry no no worries i think they figured out there wasn't going to be any fucking in it it will be fine all right well i'll tell you what (laughs) The kids have gone to bed and now pretend mommy and pretend daddy are still up. So either it's about to get interesting or Carol already ruined it. And we already know that Chip (laughs) Rossetti is still directing it. We'll find out after the break when we return for the exciteless conclusion of (laughs) The Borrowed Christmas. (laughs) Exciteless. Hey, Kara, can I talk to you for a second? Sure, Eli. What's up? So it's about Steve Novella. What about him? You know the Green River killings of the 1970s and early 1980s? So, sorry, real quick. You have something stuck in your teeth. Oh, I do? I hate that. Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, did I get it? No. 
Uh, how about now? No, still no. Ah, do you have one of those floss pick things with a little spike? Do you have one of those? No, no, Eli, you should try Quip. Uh, okay, you look like if Topanga could read. No, no, Quip, you know, the electric toothbrush you hear about all the time. Oh. It's their sleek, reusable floss pick that you'll want to try next. Wait, what's a reusable floss pick? Well, the durable handle is easy to guide. It restrings with just a click and it comes with a compact mirror dispensing case for on the go. Plus a single refill pod replaces over 180 single use plastic flossers. So it's better for your teeth and the environment. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Plus Quip also delivers brush heads, floss and toothpaste refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free so you can save money and skip the store. Wow, just five bucks? That's right. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to get it right now. Wait, what were you going to say about Steve? Oh, yeah. He's the Green River Killer. Try not to be alone with him. I think he's on to me. Stop him before he kills again. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go get a floss pick. Okay, got it. Thanks. All right, kids, are you ready for the tradition of reading the Christmas story? Oh, right, Dad, like we do every year. Of course. That's right. Okay, so once upon a time, there was a young girl named Mary. She was 14, just like you, Letty. Wow. One night, an angel came to her and said, I bring good news. God has raped a baby into you. Into a 14-year-old? Well, I mean, 14 max, right? Like, traditionally, it was 11, but that sort of <laughs> scooched up in recent years, you know. Uh, hey, Dad, why don't we read a different no, story? Don't be, don't be silly. This is a great one. At first, Mary was afraid, but the angel said, be not afraid, for your son comes to save the world. Uh, s save the world? Yes, through blood sacrifice for the sins of all man. Blood sacrifice? Seriously? Yeah. Uh -huh. The angel said, your son will suffer each and every pain and stab that man can give him to please himself, his father, who is also a ghost, so that we don't all boil in a lake of fire forever. Maybe we should just go to bed. Yeah, we should do that. Okay, but if you go to bed, you're going to miss the part with the poop bread. Yeah, I think that's okay. Fine, that's more poop bread for us. Isn't that right, Jimmy? I deeply regret helping you. You sound like my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our story with Anne telling Mr. Dale that she has a few more presents for them to wrap together. Oh, God. I really hoped that they were going to have an actual authentic couple present wrapping here. <laughs> Okay, the kids are asleep. All that's left to do is wrap the presents. Oh, okay. Um, they didn't do gift wrapped at the store? The line was so long. Come on, this will be fine. Yeah, okay, okay. No, you you need more than that. Oh, like like this much? No, no. Don't don't cut it like that. Just one long line. I, I have no idea what that means. One like, long line. Slide the scissors. Slide the okay. You know what? How about you cut the paper and I will wrap? F fine, fine. What are you doing? I am ra I'm wrapping. That looks terrible. Well, then maybe you should have married someone who works at Papyrus. That sounds great. Maybe someone at Papyrus can find my G-spot. I hate your mother. Wow, that was a quick, that was the quickest we've ever gone doodly do after an interstitial <laughs> break. Eli. Wow, that was impressive. That's impressive. <sighs> So they have this weird, like, because it's, you know, it's pretend Christmas. So they're having this pretend Christmas wrapping thing where she's like, I got this one for the paper boy. Because again, Chip Rossetti has no idea how humans work. <laughs> oh, everything about this is amazing because they do systematically go through each child, right? They're like, who's this for? Oh, look at this sled that looks like a bathtub. That's for one of the children. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, Martha loves lilac. So I bought her drugstore perfume that oh smells like lilac. And then, and then he's like, ooh, maybe I could give this to her in lieu of her bonus. And she's like, don't be an asshole. <laughs> like you're going to give her both. <laughs> Again, how am I supposed to feel about this character that just wanted to substitute dollar store perfume box for a Christmas 
those goddamn bonus. I know. Oh. Like he's writing this thinking this is a good guy. Yeah. Like people yes. are going to love him. Again, the world through Chip Rossetti's eyes where lilac is the classiest perfume. <laughs> no, no, no. This bath bomb comes with a necklace inside it. Trust me. Ooh la la. This is Man. from the beyond of Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what a rich guy would get. Oh, I love to. So they because they had set up the lilac thing right earlier because she loved the lilacs, but they hadn't set up anything for Bridget. So <laughs> so she has these like little booties. <laughs> I, I have no other mm -hmm. way to describe them. She has these little booties and she's like, guess who these are for? And and he goes, I don't know. And she's like, who's always stomping around the house? And he goes, oh, Bridget. So she won't be as stompy. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> also, some porn. Yes. They got her okay. romance novels. Those are so very clearly library books with the dust covers taken <laughs> off of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, she's like, huh? I got her some porn. She can rub her clit off to these bad boys. Let me tell you. <laughs> Sand that shit smooth. This is the good stuff. <laughs> Oh, oh Jesus man. Christ. Oh yeah, and the watch. There's like a yes, weird the watch yes, where they're like where they don't know a nice brand of watch. <laughs> but it's so weird because she's basically like, We got our son this watch, and he's like, Wow, that looks expensive. I'm not sure how I feel about that. She's like, deal with it, dude. They're playing brand chicken because these two actors in the script don't know what they didn't know Rolex. So he's like what watch did you get him? And she's like, the 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 best one. And he's like, hmm, <laughs> yes, the best watch, which would be the model you're looking at. Watch. Exactly. Honey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what I love is that we can't see anything, right? They're just looking into a box, going like, wow, there sure is a very expensive watch in this box. No, you can't. No, you can't look. You just trust us. There's an expensive watch. In the I'll tell you what expensive watches look like. They're covered in <laughs> plated with <laughs> they have hands numbers oh, God. probably. <laughs> <laughs> or I bet fancy ones don't have numbers. All right. <laughs> so then so mom takes Letty upstairs. Letty has fallen asleep in front of the Christmas tree because she's narcoleptic. <laughs> and so mom takes her upstairs and then it occurs to Mr. Dale that he doesn't have a present to give to his pretend wife oh right because he sees his present under the tree right yeah and he's like shit and then instead of going like but then again i'm paying for all this so <laughs> it makes sense that i would get presents and they wouldn't he's like i've got it and he turns to one of his his maids and he says go get me the sapphire brooch now keep in mind they could have said anything <laughs> <laughs> the clear go get me the brooch with the blue precious stones right the blue ones because right. it's they a sapphire like brooch <laughs> <laughs> so i know so little about jewelry but i know that sapphires are blue <laughs> <laughs> and they bring out this brooch and it is oh you know that shitty coffee store slash gift store in every small town across our fine nation and they make their own jewelry that still has hot glue very visible <laughs> <laughs> they would not sell this brooch <laughs> which they are going to pretend for the rest of the movie is nice yeah the, the stones in it are like I can't quite tell if they're brown or purple, like a poopy purple. <laughs> right, but they're not blue. No, they're definitely not blue. They're like probably like a knockoff amethyst or like a knockoff sure. tourmaline, maybe like a brownish kind of cloudy. It's not a good looking brooch and it's the opposite of blue. And I just don't understand <laughs> like... This is one of the easiest things to fact check. Right. <laughs> and also just how is it that a house full of people, none of them know that sapphires are blue? Well, or, or do they all know that? They got into a big ass argument with Chip Rosetti and eventually they're like, you know what? You're paying the fucking bills, man. That's a <laughs> sapphire brooch. Whatever. Fine. I, I fine. think you're it's right. It's a sapphire brooch. Yeah, Put it in right. the movie. This is going to end up on Prime anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So now she comes down and, and she's like, well, the kids are down for the night. And then all the, the like the maids and all the characters join together in this big rousing chorus of you guys are going to sleep in separate rooms tonight and not have sex. This is a Christian movie. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. That part <laughs> bummed me out a little bit. Super <laughs> bummed me out. Because, <laughs> by the way, the actors found out at the same time. They were like, I guess now we f- 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 fuck. And the maids are like, no, 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 no. She's, <laughs> she's got Still another not. room. Still. Yeah. So uh, clearly this house apparently has at least three spare bedrooms. Right. At least. At least. At yeah, least. It could be like seven. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, it is an enormous mansion. I mean, just we can't tell from that one room. You don't know how big it is. It, <laughs> For sure. You go on forever. You don't know. Yeah. OK, so now it's uh, we cut to Christmas morning. They're using Silent Night again. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no copyright on that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> So we open on Dale, like looking longingly at the tree, like he's about to beat off on it. Bukaki style or something. <laughs> And then uh, and then all the kids have to come in with their eyes closed. Now, all the presents were already under the tree the night before. Oh, it looks the exact same in the morning. Yeah. yeah. OK. All right. Just making sure. <laughs> I really wanted them to come in. And when they open their eyes, he has a gun in his mouth. <laughs> right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Eli, I died. <laughs> uh, 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 Look, I put a note next to it. <laughs> A Bud Dwyer Christmas, everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> no, Jesus, I watched that whole documentary, Eli. You just oh. need to watch the video. You don't need a whole documentary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we th- then we proceed to spend the rest of the movie watching a family have a boring Christmas. The fucking worst Christmas. It's okay. First of all, you know what goes great with microphones is super crinkly paper. Just get the crinkliest <laughs> goddamn wrapping paper you can find, guys. Please. And take your fucking time. Make sure everything's taped up real good. <laughs> and so, so they all open up scarves and they're like cool scarves because they're fucking children and children don't want <laughs> scarves for Christmas. And then there's this weird scene, this like really weird scene where the son gives the dad a book called The World's Greatest Men. Yep. <laughs> and then he's like, they should have written a chapter about you, dad. And I'm like, I think this might be a Jordan Peele movie. <laughs> like, like, something really weird is about to happen. Absolutely. And the, the daughter, the older daughter gives him, again, keep in mind, she knows that he's not related to her. So she gives her <laughs> parents a headshot of her. Yes. <laughs> A framed picture of herself. It's the weirdest. And by the way, the son, he gets the dad, the fake dad, a book about the world's greatest men. The fake mom, he got Portuguese sonnets. (laughs) Because because Chip Rossetti is like, what a smart, what's a smart present? Portuguese sonnets. It was a present you'll never be able to read. (laughs) What the hell? Well, I mean, I guess we could have set up at some point that there would be a reason for that. But no, she's like, ooh, Portuguese sonnets. Did you just buy the thickest book with a ruler? What the (laughs) fuck are you thinking, man? It's, And then I want to talk about when he opens the photo. Oh, (laughs) the photo. He opens the photo and he's like, oh my gosh, how did you find this? Right? Because... You don't know me. You're not my wife. This is a picture of my child at home. And she's like, I am your wife after all. But she's not. He shrugs his shoulders like, I guess she is my wife. Oh, yeah. and but she, she's not. She does that multiple times in this scene where she's like, a mother knows. And yeah. it's like, ew, what? What the fuck is going on? These aren't your children. So my favorite thing about this entire scene is the fact that for just a minute while they're opening presents, they call Bridget and Martha in to open their presents. And then send them back to work. <laughs> it's Christmas morning. Do Martha and Bridget not have any children or no family. aunts or cousins? Mm-hmm. But no, they're at goddamn work. One of them had to make breakfast. <laughs> yep. 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 This is so fucked up. And the motherfucker was going to take away her bonus? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> so fucked up. And it's like, and they give her like the glory. You know, Martha opens up the perfume and she's like, every good country girl loves lilac. 
She said, lilac. I can't with the lilac. And then the other maid, they're like, yeah, we got you some shitty stuff too. And she's like, it's cool. My character's not developed at all. Yeah, right. right. Boots. I guess we, yeah, sure. I would have boots. Oh, Jesus. And then, yeah, so he gets his pictures of his of his old house and then he has to give his his wife the brooch, <laughs> which is meant to be like a family heirloom. And in case you didn't get it, one of the children's like, that looks like an heirloom. <laughs> that looks like a family heirloom. <laughs> <laughs> Stakes raised. <laughs> oh, God. So then Willie's like, I'm hungry. And they're like, yeah, the starving orphan. And we get it. And so they all go to have breakfast. 80% of the presents are still unwrapped under the tree. They're like, yeah, fuck those ones. And go for waffles. <laughs> all right. So now I guess it's it's later in the day. All the kids are sitting around. They're playing checkers, enjoying the Christmasness of it all. And I'm left reflecting on the fact that like that weird aspect of Christmas that like all the Christmas shit is done at 10, 14 a.m. But then... <laughs> Yeah. You're still stuck with everybody all fucking day and nobody's really thought it through. <laughs> yeah. So they're at that part of Christmas. This is also where we learn the vital fact that Willie is Heath Enright's origin story because <laughs> Willie wins checkers and he's like, I won. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck your face. And I was like, wait a second. Hungry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I won the game. Fuck your face. Oh my God. I know why Heath isn't here this week. So, are you telling me that Heath has a hollow leg? Yeah, right, right. It's fucking weird, man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then, of course, all the kids have decided, like, because there was a moment earlier in the movie where she's like, and we'll pay you guys all for your time. And they're like, some of the kids were like, oh, we don't need any money. He's a lonely old man and we should help him for free for Christmas. And now all the kids want to give away their child labor for free. Right. Uh, even Willie. Yep. Yeah. Even greedy ass Heath. It's the weirdest scene. <laughs> this scene is like freaking me out. It's like a bad episode of Black Mirror. Like you're watching it <laughs> right? and you're just like, this is supposed to be heartwarming, I think. And this guy's deranged head. This is like a, a sweet thing, but it's actually really, really dark, like really dark. Right. No, they're like, we should volunteer for slavery. Yeah. And then it's like, hey, I really enjoyed all this time where I lived out my like pseudo pornographic, pseudo homicidal fantasies. But now I'm going to send you back to the orphanage where you can be poor. Back to the orphanage. orphanage. <laughs> that is what they're discussing. For, so first of all, there's so much to talk about here. We learned that <laughs> Mr. Dale and Jimmy, who are not fucking related, they do not know each other. They have been gone for an hour. Anything that they are doing besides fucking each other is terrifying. Right. No. Okay. E either they're fucking or Mr. Dale is burying him in an icy, shallow grave. <laughs> no, you're right. Fucking is the most normal, most healthy thing yes, they could possibly exactly. be doing. He's over 18. He's a full adult. You know, like that would be just the healthiest. I would be like, okay, this is like a progressive, interesting movie now. But no. Sure. No. The, the least creepy possible answer. Yeah. <laughs> Pay a guy to pretend to be your turn of the century son and fuck him. I get it. <laughs> Imagine how much less terrifying that would be than, so how's the college you don't go to a hundred years ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Dad, I sure am having a hard time with science. Do they have that yet? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> and I love that when they come back in, they're like, how was it? And all they have to say is, cold. Yeah, exactly. Because they were fucking. It was cold. And then they're just rubbing their hands creepily for like minutes. <laughs> like whole minutes. Okay, But yeah, th just to be clear, because I know I jumped ahead, we determined they've been gone for an hour. And so Mrs. Weston, and the main character, is going to sneak the children out of the house one by one back to the orphanage until Mr. Dale realizes all he's all alone. Yep. She might as well be like, and then he's going to open one last box, which we leave him with a gun and a single bullet. <laughs> oh, that would be the best end to this movie. Oh my God, it would be like The Mist. Yeah. It's like the worst movie with the best ending of all time. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I love so. Okay, so all the kids are like, but we don't want to go back and live in abject poverty now that we've been in the mansion. And she's like, yeah, no, I get that. Martha is devastated. She says she'll come and visit the kids in the orphanage all the time. Yeah, they have a little area where you can walk them and play with them. It's like PetSmart. <laughs> yeah. oh <my> <laughs> all right. So, yeah, so Mr. Dale is back and, and the son's back or uh, <laughs> Jimmy's back, whatever the hell he is. <laughs> 
and they, and they have to have like the big hugs all around. Everybody's sadly leaving now. They give Mr. Dale big snotty hugs on his nice sports coats. <laughs> And he's like, all right, bye, guys. Have fun being unloved and homeless. Ugh, it's so bad. And then the music kicks in. Now, most of this time, as Kara said, this has just been Chip Rossetti's nephew and his piano lessons. He's practicing his do, re, mis or whatever. And now suddenly their friend who plays the guitar starts singing and you miss that goddamn piano lesson so quickly. You're like, oh, how about Silent Night again, guys? That's still duty free, isn't it? Oh, you can still yeah. Do that. yeah. Just because the lyrics to this song are about burning in a lake of fire if you don't believe in Jesus doesn't mean that this youth pastor isn't trying to fuck the shit out of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is moody. This goes there. And then yeah. during this like guitar singer songwriter nonsense, there's a flashback scene to yes. like a few minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> it's so like we already had to watch the whole fucking movie. I don't want to watch parts of it in slow mo black and white again. Oh God, they are so desperate to get to that actual thirty minute mark there. Yeah, I checked. <laughs> These scenes are from like eleven and fourteen minutes ago, but he's flashing back to him in black and white. Damn it. They're artsy like that. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say it. I feel like Heath should have been here this week. He would have finished this movie and yelled at some kid to buy the biggest goose at the market when he was done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love that. Okay, so the, the little girl, Letty, forgot her doll, right? So he picks up the doll and he looks longingly at it. He thinks about, you know, he flashes back to earlier in the movie. And then he puts that framed photograph of the oldest quote unquote daughter on his mantle <laughs> like he's just going to keep that on his mantle and people are going to come by and they're going to say who is this your daughter and he's going to go no it's just some kid I rented a few years ago <laughs> right what is he going to tell people <laughs> Jesus. And so we kind of all know where this is going right there's, there's really just two options <laughs> there's the end of the mist with the gun in the mouth. <laughs> so good. Which is basically the same thing as like the movie's just over. He's like, go back to the orphanage now. I'm alone again. Bye. Which is actually like kind of genius and really creepy. Or, you know, the super fantastical Christy version where, of course, he decides that this is the life he's always wanted. Yep. So he has to work up to that. First, it's the lady saying, I can't take your money. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to cover my expenses and here's the rest of it back. And he does not protest this, by the way. He's like, cool, thanks. I'm cheap. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I wasn't going to give you a Christmas bonus anyway. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, here's the brooch back. It would be really fucking weird for me to keep like your dead mom's brooch. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he's like, oh no, keep it anyway. If you don't want it, you can give it to your favorite charity, which we all know is the orphanage, lol. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get any of this. What? Why is this happening? Yep. <laughs> well, okay. And then she says, like, he's like, hey, by the way, she, she, she's about to leave. Like three times they give the, she she goes to leave and he goes, wait. And she turns around and he's like, I, I do you have a receipt or something? Because my accountant is going to want. But the, so the second time he's like, I'm sorry, you haven't even asked if I was satisfied with the Christmas that I rented from you. And she says, oh, were you satisfied? And he's like, no, I wasn't. And it was going to go into this whole, like, it's supposed to be this, like, no, I wasn't satisfied because it's made me realize that this is the hole in my heart that's been missing this whole time at you, whatever. But before he can finish it, she just goes off on him for four <laughs> fucking minutes. <laughs> you motherfucker. I yes. gave you a fucking picture of your old shitty house. I got Martha so that perfume good. that smells like a dead body in a fucking <laughs> old age home. I found Jimmy and his sister <laughs> raw dogging all night long. <laughs> They had anal sex in the room next to me. I can hear them having anal sex in the room next to me. <laughs> and this goes on for so long. So <laughs> long. <laughs> Finally, she runs out of breath and he's like, hey, wait, 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 wait. There was a second half to it. I realized I have phrased this poorly. <laughs> And you know what that second half was? It wasn't you made me realize that this is what I wanted all along. It was 
I want Christ in everything I do. What? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I still am confused about where you're going with this, sir. Oh, there was a very late shift into Christianity at the last <laughs> minute here. Yeah. It's like that weird Christian view that like Jesus is in the sheets with you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, it makes me so uncomfortable. Oh my God. Yeah. So he says he wants to adopt all of those kids, even the ones that are college age. I know. Like, like can we can we just take a second to break this down? He's basically like, I'm going to adopt all the children. And she's like, oh, that's so wonderful. There's no conversation here about the fact that rich people can't just buy children. It doesn't work <laughs> Like, that. Nope. like you have to fill out forms and you have to prove that you're like a worthy adult, you know, that you're trustworthy. And, and I'm I'm guessing, have you ever rented a child is on that form? <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, you can't adopt adults. No. The two <laughs> oldest children are adults. What is this ancient fucking Rome? I can't. <laughs> Well, and then, okay, all right. And then, so she's like, oh, good, you're going to adopt the children. But now he needs his wife, right? So he turns to her and he says, this is the actual line again. This is how Chip Rossetti thinks the English language works. He says, wait, there's another thing. And she's like, there's another thing? And he says, because there's something else. This is an exact fucking quote I swear to you. Because there's something else I want in my life that I want Christ at the center of. <laughs> <laughs> Which is which is his lead in to will you marry me? <laughs> like, okay, if aliens came in right at that moment and then kidnapped these two characters and the last two minutes of the movie was just a still shot of the empty room, it would not have gotten weirder. Seriously, that actually would have been great. That would have been great. <laughs> Jesus fucking and then oh by the way there's also so this great moment where she's like yes I will marry you and we can adopt all five of those kids wait I, wait do you want to adopt all of them but Willie because we could do all but Willie we have that <laughs> choice Willie. no I if I was kidding too I also was kidding about leaving Willie at the orphanage you're right okay all right just <laughs> test in the water <laughs> Oh, my God. And there's no conversation ever about whether this woman is, like, married already, has her own children, like, has no. a life. No. Well, as she's leaving, she goes, oh, you know, John, there's something I need to tell you. And I wrote in my notes, please let it be that she's already married. Please let it be that she's already <laughs> married. <laughs> like, my, my husband and I just really needed the money. And we had a really intense conversation about whether I was going to do this in decent proposal style. And we decided that it was going to help us make mortgage this year. <laughs> <laughs> I was really shocked, actually. I feel like I, I should go fuck somebody now. I mean, we had the whole conversation. I had his permission and everything. And then the maids come back and they're so thrilled. And I can't get over the fact that, first of all, they're not maids, they're housekeepers. And housekeepers have their own families and their own <laughs> lives. But yes. we're just completely ignoring that. <laughs> Yes, but then Martha's very excited. She gives a, a Heath style woo woo, and and then the movie ends. But we have to keep watching because there's a blooper reel in the credits, right? <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't. I didn't watch it. I, 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 I let it play, but I was like looking at the wall. <laughs> it was guys. No lie. Yesterday when I watched this movie, earlier in the day, I went to the dentist and got a crown. I got multiple injections in my jaw. And then uh. I got my wisdom tooth drilled down and a crown fitted over the top of it. And this movie was more painful <laughs> than the experience <laughs> that I had at the dentist's office. Well, okay. I, I, I feel bad for you for not watching through the blooper reel because it was amazing. It wasn't exactly a blooper reel. It was just the lead actress fucking up one line 26 times <laughs> over and over <laughs> and over again. And it's clearly there so that the director can say like, I know she said, you know, think it of and shit like that in, in, in the, in the script, but look at, look at what I had to work with. <laughs> right. And we went back for everything. I'd still be making this fucking movie. And here's the thing in a blooper reel, the other actors are like, Oh, oh, oh wacky, wacky. The, everyone's just bored and mad at her for fucking up <laughs> yes. the lines. <laughs> yes, everybody's so very clearly ready to go to Crafty, which, by the way, they, they have all this little like thanks to all the restaurants they ate at and shit like that. And that was a what? sad little short story, too. It was like, and special thanks to the Waffle Hut and uh, 
It, right at the end of the buffet at Pizza Hut, turns out that if you agree in advance to buy whatever's left over, it's cheap. Uh, so <laughs> it was really fucking sad. Firehouse subs and Hacienda Mexican restaurant <laughs> received special thanks. Yes, yeah, so oh sad. God. <sighs> All right, but so okay. So seriously, though, I ask this quite often, but I kind of mean it this time. What was the moral of this story? Right, like what message was being spent? What were we supposed to learn? That you don't have to. Do- this to me is like. Did you guys ever see Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames? No. Uh-uh. Okay, so this is a garbage play that's put on, I think, by the Methodist Church. And I went and saw it when I was a child because my friend went to the church. And the the message of the story is disgusting. It's basically it's all grace and no works. So they show all these different vignettes of people dying horrible deaths and then whether or not they end up at heaven's gates or hell's flames. And so one of them is like a child molester, but he gives himself over to Jesus while he's in prison. And so he goes to heaven. And another is this like really loving, giving like bus driver who's kind of slaved away as a bus driver, but is a non-believer. And so they go to hell. It's like oh really dark. Yeah, it's really weird. And I, I need to find like, a movie version and make us watch that. Yes, yeah, right? But I feel like this is kind of that because the story is, it doesn't matter what a nightmare you are your entire life. You don't have to do any of the work. You don't have to put any work into building a relationship. You huh. don't have to actually make the family. You don't have to have any problems or, you know, learn from your mistakes. So long as you're rich, you can just buy everything you want at the last minute and it's fine. See, I was going to say, why rent the cow when you can buy the milk for free? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Well said. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of The Borrowed Christmas, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to rope you back in next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. When a determined toy company executive, Christy, must learn about Hanukkah in a hurry to land Uh. a big account, she enlists the help of her co-worker's friend, Jonathan, who happens to also be in desperate need of turning his bachelor pad into a Christmas wonderland to impress his girlfriend's father. We're watching it. Mistletoe and menorahs. Oh my God, that sounds so awful. All right. So, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 277 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for suffering alongside us this week. To hear more from her, be sure to check the show notes for a link to her podcast, Talk Nerdy. It's awesome. If you don't already listen to it, that's really on you. Also, an equally huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to go get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five star review and by sharing the show and all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scanning Idiot, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Traps on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us this chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. That's the last time I don't check the URL really closely when I go to redtube.com to watch porn. (laughs) Every character in this movie turned out to be a serial killer. (laughs) Chip Rossetti has made more than a dozen other movies. Oh, God. And we're going to watch every fucking one of them if it's the last thing I do. And TV series. (laughs) Mini series. Documentary. There's so much. <laughs> let's just do yep. it. They're they're yeah. actually getting okay, really live. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.